Um, I, I, hmm. Let's see if I have any observations about this game left. Um, I've been, I've, I'm at the point where I've been having observations about games all day. <laughs> so yeah. it's been like a, um, I was, I was on a stream friend stream for like an hour and a half earlier today than mm-hmm. I left. And I, I've been, at, I've been at Kyle since five recording. It's now almost two AM. Um, I don't know. Oh, I don't think you ever finished saying what burned you because I interrupted you. Uh, what oh, what burned um, you? That's like this. Uh, I I ended up getting burned by Big O, and like despite how non conclusive the ending of that show is, I don't hold it against that show because it was canceled prematurely. Yeah. Okay. That's and uh, I. I could tell that Big O, there was a lot more going on there that they just literally never had time to address mm-hmm. and couldn't oh. they couldn't wrap it up at the current state that the show was in at the end of the second season. You know what burned me was Sliders. Do you remember Sliders? Yeah. I do remember Sliders. I've never seen it, though. Sliders was the... This is for chat people. Well, Sliders was a, a, a Jerry O'Connell uh, sci-fi show. Uh, and, uh, oh, uh, John Reese davies was in it. Um, th- these were, those were the two big names in it. Uh, although John Reese davies was the much bigger name, even though he was a backup character uh, or supporting character. But basically, he built... He was a, he's a genius, nice guy. He's got friends. Basically, he has, like, literally anything that you could have going for you, going for you. Built mm-hmm. a uh, an interdimensional portal uh, that he went through to test. And as he was going through it, a super douchebag, like, troublemaker version of him... Uh, went like they swapped worlds basically, and so it, it, so basically he spends and gets trapped there. So he and his friends and John Reese Davies spend you know four seasons jumping from alternate universe to alternate universe trying to get back home basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first and second season set up some amazingly interesting things that just literally like so many threads just get totally dropped for no reason like at some point um the fbi is investigating his real world house like from the from original earth uh or Uh i guess starting point a earth um and like those fbi agents never show up again uh but there's a whole there was a whole episode where like they showed these fbi agents going through his stuff interviewing his friends that's this is in the first season never show up uh there's a part where where uh john reese davies gets uh uh like gets in a scuffle with an evil version of John Reese Davies from another world, and then there's a moment where they uh, like they're like, "No, I'm the right one. I'm the right one." And what like one of them punches the other one and hops through the portal, and they just like there's supposed to be this whole arc where they try to figure out which one he was, if he was right or wrong, and then they just drop it. Like it never <laughs> is brought up again. Never that sounds so infuriating. It's infuriating. Like it's a really fun campy show that just never pays off on its on on these threads that it has and part of it is due to that the fact that it was canceled and moved Mm -hmm. to sci-fi channel but like even then a lot of that stuff should have been resolved before that even happened right uh but sliders is fun that's uh that that is is in the chat says yo sliders which fucking professor was that that jumped with you like that's yeah it was crazy and it was yeah. heavily implied, heavily implied that it was the wrong one. And, and they just never and they swung just back around to it. Never swung back around to it. Yeah, it was crazy. That's uh that's the main reason why and and this is going to I know that you love this show. What's up? Uh that's why I've never watched Twin Peaks. Oh, I okay. So we can get into Twin Peaks and why the ending of Twin Peaks is garbage. Um, and and well, well, I, I I have opinions about David Lynch too that you're you may not. The like. only David Lynch thing that I've ever seen is Twin Peaks, so I have no okay. attachment to David Lynch at all. Uh, okay, yeah. So, um, but no, so so my I I think that David Lynch and and uh, people are not going to be happy with this, but I think that David dude, Lynch I is, spent, is I a fantastic half an director. Hour today. I spent a half hour today saying that as a creative storyteller, I think that he is extremely devoid of substance okay um so like uh and i think that he knows that he is and i think it's all performance art for him twin so peaks like, has a lot of substance 
in it. Does it? it or does, does, or has yeah. he tricked you into thinking that there's a lot of no, substance? No, no, no. This is not a thing that I have nostalgia for. It, it is something that I didn't, I never saw until like three years ago. Um, and like it has, it, okay, it, it has a, it has more substance than a cop show traditionally would. And it has more atmosphere than anything I've ever seen. Um, okay, granted, like that's that's like that's why I think that Lynch is a good director is because everything that he makes has yeah is is atmospheric and works on that level. It, it has it has the thing that Silent Hill Two has in the way that characters interact, but in a really really well polished, more but thought out way that totally works. Yeah, it right. very much reminds me of like. Like when I look at when I look at Silent Hill two, like character interactions, I'm like, oh, this is someone trying to do that, but they don't quite get it, and it's not nearly as polished or felt like, like the character interactions at Twin Peaks are are like not things I've seen anywhere else, and mm-hmm. also are super interesting, and the reason that that show gets so terrible in the last few episodes is because of a a decision that the network forced on the show that the show did not want to do. Uh, so, but they, so they were basically like, we're going to cancel you if you don't do this thing. And the thing that they did kind of ruined the show. Um, mm. But it's so great ma- for the first season and a half. And the, the first episode of the second season has my favorite scene of any TV show of all time. Uh, it's ma- maybe, maybe substance wasn't the right word. Uh, but I, I meant more, and maybe maybe Twin Peaks is better about this than some of the other David Lynch stuff that I've seen. But I, I mean, like just like purpose more or intent, I guess. Because like, like like a lot a lot of my opinion on David Lynch as a, as a creative storyteller or as just as a storyteller in general is based on Eraserhead. Okay. Um, which is is just like his seminal crazy David Lynch thing that that everybody is always referencing. Yeah. And like as as there, far as I can tell, Twin Peaks is much more tempered than anything else David Lynch has ever done. Okay. Like, David, like, like I really think Twin Peaks was David Lynch trying to make a hit. Like, trying to, was, like, it, it, like, it feels like David Lynch, it feels like Bob Dylan going electric is what Twin Peaks right. feels like for, but a great, I'm going off of not having seen anything else David Lynch has ever done. <laughs> um, but it, no, but like, but, but like the, the thing with the racer head is like, so like so much discussion has gone into like people dissect it like it's an art piece and like so much discussion has gone into what all the symbolism means and like why certain choices were made with shots and like what the visual metaphors are. Yeah, I couldn't and, be like, less interested in most of that. I don't do what I, I couldn't like. I don't think any of that is essential to my Twin Peaks experience. Okay. See, that's that's the stuff about David Lynch that bothers me the most. Yeah, is because I I don't think that he has any any purpose or intent whenever he's making that stuff. I think he's just uh, I think he has a great eye for things that are unsettling, and he's just doing that. And the fact that it spawn he is just nurturing the discussion about it by leading people to believe that there is a deeper meaning to the stuff that he's making. I think that there I mean it's I definitely think there's there's stuff that is not surface stuff to Twin Peaks. I but I don't think I don't think that it's like I don't I don't people talk about Twin Peaks the same way that they talk about Silent Hill, where every dumb thing has a billion meanings and it's dumb and stupid. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of it's it's one of the my least favorite things about Silent Hill is people going into stuff and arguing about things that I don't think anybody thought about twice when making the game. Right. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. Um. But like, like, like David Lynch has said that like there there is a Bible verse that unlocks Eraserhead and makes everything make sense, but he's never going to tell anybody what that is, and that's a fucking that's lie. That's super... Uh, that's an obnoxious. That's really obnoxious. Yeah. So, like, that So like that, that sort of thing is what makes me not like David Lynch, yeah. but uh, on the you other side of that coin Peaks. is it's that really he's a super talented director, yeah. and I know a lot of people that really love Twin Peaks, mm-hmm. so, like, I'm sure I'll get around to watching it someday. It's it's and on. It, I, I enemy also, Violet in chat says, "Lol, yes, judge all of David Lynch's work on Eraserhead, perfectly fair." And yeah, I, I admit it's it's not the it's not the best way to, um, my, my my critique of David of David Lynch is not comprehensive, and I I recognize that. But the things that I learned about Eraserhead while whenever I was 
trying to get into it and read more about it and find out what it means, the stuff that I found out made, soured me on his stuff a lot. Yeah, that's uh, also his music is terrible. Um, is it? Yeah, it's really it's really bad. It's <laughs> like um, you know you know David Lynch. It's that but music. Uh, <laughs> Great. Yeah, uh, it's no good. Um, because right now Keith is all excited about talking about David Lynch. But right when we get back to myth, he's not going to give it two shits. Uh, no, that's absolutely true. Um, so, uh, another thing about Twin Peaks, I really didn't like the first episode. You didn't? You did not like the first episode? Uh, hold on, Jordan. I have been left to my lonesome. Chad is talking about Fooly Cooly FLCL, which is a great show. Just going to take a couple vapes off my e-cig while we're waiting. Hi, Jordan. Hi. It's Nicole. Hi. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Good. I'm, I don't, my voice might sound really weird because I've been yelling at drunk people for like nine hours. Oh, that sounds fun. Well, I made $260, so that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. I definitely didn't make $260 today. Yeah, I, know. I can see that you've been playing Mist for two hours and three minutes. <laughs> so, oh, well, a lot of that was I trying to play the original Mist and it crashing. <laughs> now I'm eating ramen. <laughs> yeah. So how's Mist? Uh, it's good. I like it a whole lot. I played it when I was like 10. My stepdad had it and I played the first 30 minutes. A lot. <laughs> oh, you mean everyone's experience with mist? Yeah, that. <laughs> hi, Kyle. If anybody at home is wondering, I am using a Kanger Aero Tank Mega on an iJust battery, and my tank is full of bloodbath from. Uh, Mount Sorry. Baker Vapor. Wait, these are it is a uh, 50 50 PG VG blend at 6 milligrams per milliliter. What the and, hell are you uh, saying, Jordan? Stop, I'm vaping. So, Jordan, for real. Yeah. So, if you are vaping and your mixture does not have nicotine in it, which I've heard is a possibility, like on a scale of one to bad, how bad is vaping for you if it doesn't have nicotine in it? Uh, <laughs> doesn't have nicotine. What if it's just what if it has THC? <laughs> uh, right, right now the the there hasn't been there haven't been enough studies done to conclusively say one hundred percent that vaping is totally exclusively safe. But all the evidence that does exist supports that vaping on its own is safe because uh, vaping. Jordan. Yeah. I didn't hear any of that. <laughs> Can you hear him now? I can hear the ocean and also Jordan now. So that's Before good. I can only hear the ocean. Okay. Okay. Can I, you hear me now? I can hear you now. Can you start over? Okay. So uh, long. It's it's that's that's a really long discussion. But long story short is that there haven't been enough long term studies done to know conclusively, but the evidence that exists right now uh, suggests that vaping on its own is perfectly safe because it uses. Uh, the main ingredient in most liquid is propylene glycol, which is what fog machines use. And fo the stuff that fog machines produce has been, you know, like FDA approved as being inhalable by humans. And there have been studies done for that. And it's fine. Um, what the, ma the main thing that the jury is still out on is what the long term effects of the flavorings are. Um, and their food grade flavorings that by all accounts are totally fine to be ingested. Uh, there just haven't been long-term studies done on what inhaling these food-grade flavorings mm. may or may not yeah, do. That, that's, that's, probably the um, same, that's probably the same question as to whether uh, or not flavoring your water with those dumb plastic things well, that you squeeze. The thing is that I don't think nicotine... Nicotine's not good for you. Well, yeah. But it's also well, not necessarily the worst thing about no, cigarettes. No, no, it's, it's pretty bad. It's bad, right? but well, there's a lot I mean, of other bad stuff in there. Mm -hmm. 
nicotine is bad because it's nicotine is not a carcinogen on its own, but it's a cancer accelerant. There you go. So um, it increases the chance that any cancerous development that may have happened otherwise would happen faster. Okay, so uh, um, I'm just about ready to get back to misting. Wait, I have to tell him why I want to know. Okay. Okay, so Jordan, you know how I sent you that picture of vape cod? Yes. Or Cape, was it Cape? So then I realized there, that like a half mile down the same road is another. Sh- there's now there's Cape Vape and Vape Cod, and so <laughs> then I realized that the, the one of the dishwashers at the restaurant I work at, I was like, oh man, you have the sweetest easy I've ever seen, and good lord, does it smell good? And because every time like in between dishes, he'll he'll you know take hits off of it, and he'll share with the other people in the kitchen and whatnot. And mm-hmm. then I was he was like. Yeah, I get some pretty sweet deals. I work at Vape Cod, and I was like, what? <laughs> but I don't want to ask, because he's always really busy. And he's been like, yeah, you can have some. But I'm like, I don't know what this is. I'm like, I know it smells right. like cotton candy, and that's that's enough to get me going. But <laughs> So now I have to do more research. My girlfriend yeah, is so yeah. much better of a person than I am. Why? I don't know what's in it. So it was just like, you can try it, I'd be like, yeah! I don't think it's a positive thing about your girlfriend, just a negative thing about you. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's a thing <laughs> to be fair. Most, most people won't just take a thing that they don't know what it is. Tomato, tomato. Well, that, and if it has nicotine in it, I have an arrhythmia, so I don't really feel like I need to fuck with that while I'm also working, like, 19-hour days. All right. Yeah, if, if, if you have any sort of heart condition, anything with nicotine in it is a bad yeah. idea, especially because the nicotine that's being delivered is being delivered in a purer form than what you would get from a cigarette. Yep. So people that have nicotine sensitivities are more likely to uh, have a reaction to I the nicotine in vape than they would to the nicotine in smoke. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> I don't want the rest of this ramen. Do you want it? I can't, I can't. I guess so. <laughs> You're weird wrong... Jordan, the ramen way more like ramen, wrongmen. Shut up. The way my ramen <laughs> is, I make I make the ramen and then I take the liquid out and then I add Blech. the seasonings to the noodles with just no. a little bit of liquid. No, no, that you're leaving out half of what you're leaving out most of what's wrong with the way you make ramen. She doesn't boil water and then boil the ramen in the water. She just puts water in a bowl, puts the block of ramen in the bowl, and microwaves it for two to and a half fair, minutes. If I had it's more disgusting. Time, I would boil it, but when I'm making ramen... That's, I'm how, uh, that's how my old roommate made ramen. And was it awful? Have you tried it? It's delicious. I didn't ever... I never tried it, no. Or just extra flavor for noodles. Yeah, it's good. This is like eight or nine steps down from the right way to make ramen in terms of taste. <laughs> like, this doesn't even taste the same. Hey, how do you like those french fries I brought home for you? Are they good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. Hello, uh, can, Nicole, can you still hear me? I can. Uh, the only other thing that might be potential, potentially something that you have to look out for with vaping is that uh, some people have an allergy to propylene glycol, and I'm one of those people. She probably has it. Probably, yeah. There's like a 1 in um, 25 chance that I don't have it. <laughs> uh, and so uh, the liquid that you buy for your e-cig is made out, primarily made out of propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. And you can buy it in different ratios of that. It sounds exactly so like, like stuff I want to inhale. Do what? I said this, sounds, really exact, this sounds exactly like stuff I want to inhale. Well, propylene glycol is just fog machine stuff. It, it carries the flavor. I don't know. And the vegetable glycerin is weird. what makes the vapor. Um, but so... Can you, can you put the cable like in front of you so you can sit back? Uh, so most most it? liquid that you buy is 80% propylene glycol and 20% vegetable glycerin. And uh, I have to buy liquid that is at least 40% vegetable glycerin. Otherwise, I get really, really tremendously bad migraines. Yeah. Oh, God. I already have that. Yeah. Hey, can who's, uh, can we miss who's now? Here, who's here I would like to miss. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. He's uh, listen, listen. I get to spend like 0. .5 daylight hours with Kyle when I work shifts like this, <laughs> so you guys can suffer for like five minutes. Who, who's Seer too? Do we know Seer? Yeah, Seer is Seer. You gonna come? If he's gonna come to the Cape, you should tell him to come to my restaurant that I work at. Okay. Go to her the restaurant that she works at. I work at Seaside Pub on Main Street in Hyamas. So. She works at Vape Cod selling volcanoes. Fuck off. No, I don't. <laughs> no. Uh, Mitch Never Dies says, what is even going on with this stream? And then Scratty says, Kyle left, then Keith left, then Jordan started talking through Kyle's computer to someone about vaping. <laughs> Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle.
Hi, I'm someone. I'm we Nicole. were. I live here. We were playing Mist, but then Nicole got home from work, so I left to say hello to Nicole and investigate cat pee smells. And then yep. there was Twin Peaks discussion. P.S. Nicole, aka Kyle's girlfriend, who owns the house that this room is commencing in, and also Nuffle then started over this paradox of saying, "Wait, what's vaping?" <laughs> There's no way someone doesn't know what that means. He right? literally said, wait, what's vaping? So maybe just listen to this later and you'll know all about vaping. We can we can cut out this uh, this little discussion in the middle of me and Keith talking about David Lynch and uh, like mysterious fiction and my conversation with Nicole uh, about vaping and just make that a run button podcast. <laughs> Um, Seer, you'll be in Wellfleet, which is about a half an hour away from Hyannis, and you can check the wellfleetdrivein.com website and see what movies they're playing, and also then go to the local scoop in Orleans. What is Keith doing? He's looking at his Hi, broken, broken phone. He's looking at his phone. I'm going to give him back What happened to his phone? I don't know what happened to your phone. Uh, Didn't you, like, throw it against something? It. My sister threw it against something. His sister, sister threw, it against it. threw it against the wall and it broke. And then as a joke, he, pre- he much, months, later, months pre- later, months later, pretended to throw his phone at the wall, except it slipped out of his hand and hit the wall. Well, you're doing Great. Th- you're, you're, you're my mothering right now, which is you're telling a story completely wrong and not the way that I tell okay, it. Okay, what's the story? Um, as I pretended to be really mad and because my phone was super busted already, oh. I just straight up threw it. Right. And it broke. I wasn't like I didn't act. Oh like, right, you funny. weren't. Bleh, oops. Right, like, you I weren't being a dummy. You were being a fucking idiot. I yeah. forgot. You're right. You really saved <laughs> well, that the, story. I didn't break my phone on accident. I broke it on purpose. It Tell right, it the right it's way. It's not any more broken now than it was. It's like slightly more broken, but not really. Not really more broken. Um, and that was also when I thought I was two weeks away from getting a new phone. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of Do depth wanna... to this. Do you want to play yeah, Miss? I, or? I have one more question for Jordan, and I'm gonna go. Is that okay? Well, I'm, I'm gonna give Keith back the microphone, and I'm gonna finish reading my book and go to bed because I have to work again at eleven. Okay. Um, Jordan, do you know the Doctor Brain games? Uh, yes. they call me Doctor right? Brain. Kyle does not know what I'm games not a real brain. doctor, Shh. but I am a real brain. I am an actual brain. Anyways, um, (laughs) Kyle doesn't know what Dr. Brain is, and Jordan, have you ever played Where in Time is Carmen San Diego? Yeah, totally. Okay, I think that that there should be a stream that that involves those two things. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, no, uh, The Island of Dr. Brain was one of my favorite games as a kid. <laughs> I, like the one, I like the one. Don't even. I like the one that has that thing where there's like the grid of brains, and they give you a trivia question, and you have to like eliminate the brains and make the right pattern with the trivia hey, question. Have you guys ever played that con- Super Nintendo combo cart Tetris and Doctor Brain? <laughs> <laughs> you just make Jordan giggle. That's really funny. All right, I'm gonna finish my book and go to bed. Bye. It's okay. Because I, I talked to Jordan. Bye, Nicole. Like three times less than I talked to Kyle ever. Well, that makes sense. You live with Kyle. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, now, when I'm home with him for, like, a half an hour a day, if I'm lucky. I'm, I'm back to the world of working three jobs, so this is a thing I'm doing. Not being home ever. So. Okay, bye, stream. That means I, I, can't, I can't stream all night because I have to go... Mitch is all capsing other uh, They Might Be Giant songs. No, no, it's okay because I can just go to bed by myself <laughs> and fall asleep way quicker. Put Nicole on keys mic or something. I I I am. Yeah, she's not exactly talking to the right end of it, but that's what fine. The fu- I'm sorry. Is the Mad. big round end no, not the, the right one? No, it's not. You talking to the front of it where the where the red light is? Whose fault is this? I've tried to explain it to you a number of times. <laughs> it's okay. What? No, don't leave. So, other flavors that I have from Mount Baker that I haven't gotten a chance to try yet... What's up, Jordan? Uh, ...include salacious strawberry, 
and uh, black clove. Is that like a weird offshoot of the uh, Star Wars flavors that they have? And one of them is probably Salacious Crumb? <laughs> what is uh, no, these are from a different place. Okay. The, the Star Wars flavors are from my local vape shop. Uh, Phoenix Vapors. You don't uh, have enough Phoenix Vapor Shop, and their tagline is "Rise from the Ashes." Which I thought that's was a pretty. pretty that's a pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Listen, if, uh, vape, if you are ever in Austin, Texas, name, and are in need like... of vaping supplies or equipment, stop by Phoenix Vape Shop. Do you get They'll paid? Do they pay you? Right. Do they pay you for that plug? No. No. This is for free. They should. You just believe in the product. mm Hmm. I feel I feel like that if if a if a vape shop doesn't have a clever title then it has nothing. It's like that's the only thing that they have to separate themselves from other places. It, it is, and like that a lot of a lot of places aren't putting enough effort. I think vape cod is pretty good though. Vape, vape pretty cod good, yeah. is incredible. Cape vape though, no good. You think you guys think Cape Vape is better? No, I think Cape Vape is worse. I yeah, think I think Cape I Vape Cod is better. To stay over tonight, you guys need to drive down there and take a picture in front of each of them. Like go inside. I'm talking. Oh, we're just names. We're just talking about names. Yeah, just just name wise. That's that's a real shame if Vape Cape Vape is the better store because it has the worst name. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's a tragedy. It it rhymes, but it's not a it's not a fun pun. Jordan, did something horrible just happen where you live? What? I just hear a siren. Did something horrible happen? Uh, no. Don't worry about uh, anything. Did you do something horrible? Do you guys want to miss? Yeah. I do. You want to miss a little bit? You want to hit keys on a piano to open up a spaceship or whatever? Let's finish this game. Okay. 